Hello, my name is John Zaktansky. I'm the Middle Susquehanna Riverkeeper coming to you today with the next in our study, the Susquehanna video series. These are experiments and things you can do at home to learn more about our watershed and some of the issues that we're facing. One of the biggest topics that I've gotten reports on so far is as far as questions that people have concerns foam on top of creeks and rivers uh, in our watershed. Now, some foam that you find on area creeks and rivers is natural. Some of it is not so natural. To get a better feel of what exactly is going on uh, within our watershed when it comes to foam that we find on our waterways, uh, we're going to use simply an egg. Uh, all right, so you might be asking, how could some of the foams that we find on our creeks and rivers be natural? Uh, it sounds kind of awkward and weird. Um, so we wanted to take some time to show you how that happens. Um, I cracked a couple eggs into this mixing bowl, uh, took the yolks out, so it's just the whites that are in it. And um, you might remember uh, eating a lemon meringue pie. The meringue on top is basically just whipped up egg whites and some sugar. We're going to skip the sugar part and go with the egg whites, so let's do that. We have our mixer, so we're going to simply put it in and whip this up. You see the various bubbles forming as air is being whipped into the egg weight. The egg weight is 90% water, only 10% of it is not water, and that's mostly proteins that you'll spit are in there. Now we're still whipping our eggs, and you can see there's starting to be a couple little bit of soft peaks too, but we want to get a nice thick foam. Okay, you can see our foam has whipped up now, it's getting a lot thicker as we continue to whip it up. We don't want to overdo it, so we're going to slow it down and stop it with what we have. Okay, we have our whipped egg whites now in our bowl. Uh, basically, it's meringue without the sugar. And uh, we're going to now look at what it looks like as foam on water. So we move this container of water over, and from our bowl, we're just going to spoon out a little bit of our whipped egg white and place it on top of the water. And blobs. So there you have it. We have some homemade foam floating on top of our water here. Now the foam that you find in creeks and rivers can either be natural or can be uh, pollution. And uh, we'll talk about that here in a moment. Uh, the natural um, foam that we find on our creeks and rivers is typically made up of organic matter, which is carbon-based compounds from plants and animals that have died or decayed or, or, or cast off, uh, and that's whipped around by wind and rocks and rapids uh, over the course of time. And um, Mother Nature may not have a hand mixer, um, but there are quite a lot of ways for this to get mixed up. Um, the color and the size of the bubbles vary based on the matter, the winds, the rapids, and the speed of the water. Uh, usually our natural-based foams have a fishy or earthy type smell. And so you can tell it's something that's natural. A lot of times it's in the shade of tan or brown uh, due to other organic matter such as tannins that you can find in plants uh, that kind of discolor it and kind of has that off-white color or that tan or brownish color. That's mostly natural. Uh, but when is foam that you see something that should be concerning? When is it caused by humans? When is it potentially pollution that you should be giving us a call about? Well, um, first of all, smell. As I mentioned, natural foam uh, on our waterways smells kind of earthy, kind of fishy. If it smells fragrant, like a, a, a detergent or a soapy smell, uh, something that you know is just not natural, uh, then obviously it's something we should be looking into. Um, also, if it's something that's a different color. So example, uh, natural, as we talked about, can be kind of a tannish color or a brownish color over time as tannins and other uh, substances get involved, uh, natural substances. But if it's something that is bright white, uh, or if it's something that's colored oddly, like pink or blue or something that's just not natural, uh, once again, you want to contact the Middle Susquehanna Riverkeeper Association. We can look into it. Thanks for joining us. Again, my name is John Zaktansky. I'm the Middle Susquehanna Riverkeeper. Anytime you see something that might be concerning to you out on the waterways, please feel free to call us at 570 768 6300 or send me an email at midsusriver at gmail.com. 
Thanks for joining us again and check back in soon for the next in our Study the Susquehanna video series.